This video is going to be about how my interview process went for the last four months for big tech companies. If you've seen my first video, it's about my plan to learn data structures and algorithms so that I can get a job at a big tech company. Let me just say that this process is no joke and you definitely want to know if you're committed or not to this path if it's what you want to do in life. So there's really no way of describing how this actually feels until you go through the process yourself. Let's just say it's a lot of work, it's a lot of studying, uh, you're going to get discouraged a lot because companies really don't care about you at all. And if you end up being one of the lucky ones that gets an internship because the competition is so fierce, then you're going to make a ton of money and you're, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so I think I applied to around 80 to 90 companies, somewhere around that number. And I want to say I heard back from about 30, very generously, probably something more like 20. Of those 20 to 30, I did the hacker ranks and online assessments, and I passed about 60 to 70% of them. And I got on-site slash interviews from about half of those. Some of the companies I got interviews from were Twilio, Meta, Salesforce, Gap, Intuit, Lyft, Figma, Stripe, Tableau, and a few more. Long story short, I was rejected from all of them, except two. And it was extremely, extremely discouraging because I basically passed all the technical portions from how I felt through the interviews and from what the interviewers told me. So let's just say that if you leak code every day for multiple hours, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to get a great internship. A few of the factors that play into this are how your interviewers feeling, how their day is going, uh, whether they ask you union find or some really hard graph problem or some sort of DP that you've never heard of. They say that it depends a lot on how you solve the problem, and I think that is correct, but also when I talk through my steps and it makes sense, and I know that because I've done the leak code and I know the solution, and I talk through it exactly how I know you're supposed to, and I hear back that I solved all the problems correctly, but the pace at which I solved them did not align with what they wanted in an intern, I don't know. It felt like it's extremely competitive this year and it's probably more competitive than ever before. I mean, you have interns making $90 an hour at companies like Jane Street, $90. That's the top, but that's as a college student. It's never like, it's still in school. That's insane. So yeah, interviewing is no joke and you should definitely be committed to studying and making it kind of like your whole life. I mean, it was kind of like eating away at all my time because I had school, I had work about 20 to 40 hours a week depending on which week it was. Uh, finals and midterms are extremely tough, especially if you're an upperclassman when classes are pretty tough. Taking care of my dogs, trying to eat enough and sleep enough, it's just, it was a lot to stack on top of that, like leak codes and hacker ranks and online assessments every day pretty much. So enough about the process, which company did I end up going with? So I ended up getting offers from Twilio and Intuit and my return offer from Accenture from last year. So that makes three offers. I ended up choosing to go with Intuit. This was for a variety of reasons, mostly because I love using their products, Mint, TurboTax, and QuickBooks. I think that they're great products in their space. I think they're the leaders in most of the space is that their products exist. More than that, I would get to stay in San Diego and I wouldn't have to relocate, which is really cool because it's where I'm living right now. And yeah. Tying back into the interview process as a whole, it took place from about August to December for me personally. And it's extremely discouraging thinking that things went really well and then you hear back and they just straight up reject you. I mean, I've had great conversations with interviewers and I passed all the technical portions and the behavioral just felt like a perfect fit and then they get back to me and they're like, sorry, not you. Um, you kind of have to get used to it. Now I say that as somebody who has not gotten used to it at all and I was extremely discouraged and I felt like hurt almost when I got rejected from all the companies that I really wanted to work at. But you just have to keep going and it starts to eat away at you but you just have to keep going and if you have put in the effort then a company will hire you. What's important to remember is that the market for entry level engineers right now is extremely low demand. People don't want entry level engineers. They want mid to senior level engineers more than anything. Because the discrepancy level between supply and demand for entry level engineers, it makes the job market extremely competitive for people trying to go for internships and entry level positions. So 
keep that in mind. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and leave a like and subscribe if you want more content about different technologies and tech career info and things like that. And be sure to check out my first video if you're interested in how I studied for these interviews. Thank you and happy new years.